Should have probably ended the game a little early, you know, 32. Involved in 32 kills with only one death usually means you could have closed quicker, but that, that's what, that was Origin yesterday. Yeah, We're having some fun. It's a possible possible in for Copenhagen Wolves, knowing that you know that was a game that took 39 minutes, even though they were in the lead for pretty much all of it. So into picks and bans now. They're going pretty quickly. We've got a Cassiopeia Draven off the board, targeting the Wolves. Big picks, of course. No brainer there. LeBlanc and Rumble taken away as well. So as had a monster performance on that Rumble yesterday. 8, 1, and 20. And that death was a fountain dive. Yeah, so far, I think Soas has only played Rumble in the LCS, so a good target ban there from the Wolves, and we saw just quite how destructive Rumble can be last game. Reaction ban from Origin. They do, they want to first pick something other than Alistar and don't want the Wolves to get the, their hands on Alistar. Uh, Rise was open, so that was that potential something. Mm -hmm. Reaction ban from the Wolves coming out, and then Callista Quick. open for Niels. Quick Callista. We'll see what Niels makes of this. The last time he did play it, of course they won. They haven't lost a game yet, but 7-2-6, and six, respectable score. We'll see what the Wolves answer with. You know, I know you like to talk about the, the, the trifecta or what was a trifecta of 80 carries. Yeah, that basically means that there's there's Kalista on one side, Urgot and Sivir on the other. Kalista is incredibly good into the Sivir matchup, so unlikely we see that. Usually when you see Kalista and Maokai is open, she will get locked immediately to deny, uh, to deny her survivability and lock her down in fights. Usually when you see a Maokai, you like yourself a Black Shield if uh, the Wolves want to take that away immediately as well. I have a bit of a strategy on our hands. Gives them a bit more of that front line. So, with the Wolves picking their support, picking their top lane, working their way towards that composition, what do Origin decide to favor next? A lot of junglers still available on the board. In fact, none were banned away, and that means we could see that Gragas falling into Amazing, Amazing's hands and the Thresh into Mythies. Yeah, Miffy picked Annie last week as well, but I think he'll resort to the Thresh. Thresh Galista is such a fun lane to watch. So many quirky interactions, so much outplay potential. Lantern, Fate Skull, in and out, double range. Plays well into Morgana if she misses the bind, which is incredibly hard to land with. Galista hopping left and right. Yes, you have the Black Shield to facilitate your Maokai in, but you have to get through the laning phase against one of the most potent duo lanes in LCS right now. Yeah. Miffy and Niels. Well, and, and the Callista Thresh, too. I feel like, you know, you, you take for granted that, oh, I can hit a Dark Binding, I can make it happen, but that Callista's hopping around all the time, and you got to be able to lock it down. That's that's the reason you've got the Maokai there, but what else can the Wolves do to deal with this? And we haven't even seen Peke's pick yet. We haven't seen uh, what Soaz is going to go with, and they were ones that really, really stacked on the damage yesterday. I feel like there's a whole lot of threats on this Origin team, and you can't just focus on one side. Yeah, good, good early draft already from Origin, and I, I just love this dramatic Champions like music, Para. It adds the tension is quite powerful. a lot. And, and as the last moments tick away, you know, we see this lock-in for the Wolves now. Airwalks is, go is going on the Evelyn, and Freeze is on the Ash. The Ash, right. quite immobile pick. Risky. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna let that breathe for a little bit. Just wanna, the Vayne hover. There, there is a po slight possibility of top lane Vayne, but I doubt it. I don't think Soaz is that crazy quite yet. Doesn't seem to uh, be his style, so I'm Not just going to ignore that. Ash is is able to keep her range against Kalista. Can poke her out a little bit, but Fate's Call can be used uh, offensively to throw Thresh in there, CC her, and punish her uh, immobility, just like Forgiven got punished on the Ash. In addition, Thresh can just flash aggressively and get pulled out by Fate's Call as well. Mm -hmm. But there is the addition of the Black Shield to keep her safe. The Maokai Eve again, yet again. We've seen those com that combo so many times together. Maokai holds the front, Evelyn flanks, or Evelyn holds the front, and Maokai flank. A lot of options there, but let's see. Mid lane counter pick Speaking for Soren. Azir is still open. Yep. And the preemptive counter pick by, by Peke. He says, I know you're going he, Azir. He, he's liking the Vlad, and he's trying to bait it a little bit. Yeah. 6 2 15 was the score line yesterday. Very respectable score. Maybe we see Kogma here. We just might, but how does that synergize with this Wolf's comp already? I think it synergizes all right. We have the defensive black shield, the double tank to keep people at bay, and you have the arrow to engage if you land enough poke. It's not going to be Darius mid lane. Yeah. It might, you know. You know, we've seen some crazy stuff already, but uh, crazy things. But you know, I don't know if we're ready to get that crazy right now. Uh, a lot of concentration on the faces of the wolves here. Are they just going to be bold enough to pick the Azir into it? That requires a lot of trust in your mid laner. I feel like Soren's earned it though. Yeah, I wouldn't call it. See, I called it the preemptive counterpick earlier. I'm not 
I haven't seen the matchup play out enough to definitely call it a counter pick, but Vladimir did well into Azir. Life steals up that poke that comes out, dives under the Emperor's Divide with the Sanguine Pool, has the all in potential to just pop REQ and do a whole heap of damage. Definitely a strong pick. And in addition to that, Hecarim will be wreaking havoc in the backline for the Wolves. Try and punish the immobile Ash, and Azir is locked in here. Yeah, so we've got a Copenhagen Wolves comp. They have a couple things going for them. They have got that very strong Azir. They've got uh, a big front line of the Maokai, the Evelyn. If they can pull off a flank, they can squish Origin between them, but it'll be very, very difficult. And if they themselves get caught, there's not a lot of tankiness outside that Maokai. The Azir is going to have to make very frequent use of that barrier, and Airwax is really going to need to pull these flanks up. We've seen mixed success on Evelyn's here in Europe, and you, know, you don't want to be on the losing side of that one. Origin, on the other hand, very strong composition, Krepo. I like both teams' composition, and the last time I said that, that was a Fnatic Gambit game. And earlier this morning, that turned, to, uh, turned out to be a fantastic game to watch, and I really hope for a repetition of the same match here. Just hope for a close game, nice game, and a lot of blood. I think a lot of blood will definitely be the case, especially not just of Vladimir in the game, but Peke's Vladimir indeed. This is going to be something else. I can't wait. It's getting exciting. Get Last game of the week, here. too. Last, Last game, game of the week. Of the week. But, uh, you know, that means we've got uh, one more thing for you guys to do. You came, you saw, and now it's time to tweet. At OLE Sports, OG win or CW win. We'll tally those up in game and see who you think is going to come out ahead. But for now, we're ready to wrap up this week number two here in Europe in style with the OG boys taking on the Copenhagen Wolves. And I asked for blood and so as he heard my prayers, the offensive summoner ignite on Blood Knight Hecarim. It's going to be a bloodbath. No defensive summoner. We've seen ponies get mm -hmm. punished, put back into their stable without an offensive summoner, or without a defensive summoner rather. But are Young Buck and Airwax going to do the same? And if they do, is Amazing going to be lurking in reaction? No smite shenanigans. If I don't take Flash, I want to burn things down with the Ignite, says Soas. That's the mentality for the team. They, they don't necessarily need that extra smite. They don't need to uh, challenge opponents. They can just beat them down. So for now, we've got the teams fanning out the line of scrimmage. Soas just outside the range of the sapling. And no lane swapperoos this time around. Origin are going to take it straight up, and so are the Wolves for the time being. I wonder if this Galista oh, Thresh lane are going to take the camp. I want to be careful. Out a little bit. Take a start Q. Keep the ward nice and safe, but got to be careful to start things off. We've seen a couple level ones go awry today. Yeah, level one can have a big influence in the game. Is Origin going to go for that one-man leash, one-man nuisance on Thresh, like we've seen before, where Niels goes to help his jungler? Uh, sets Amazing up for a really quick clear to Make punish that spawn. Evelyn that goes very low in her clears, potentially, and send Miffy over to stop that Grump, or they're going to take the experience and go for the level 2 all-in. Both very viable options. That one ward from Origin will definitely help to know exactly what that start's going to be from Copenhagen Wolves on the other side. Most of the Wolves' wards have been spent in the river. They've been playing this very defensively. And you have to have respect for this team. I mean, there's a, there's a reason they blazed into the LCS and you know, find themselves starting out undefeated. And I want to watch these golems if they do it efficiently. They're spreading out the Galista the passive proc. One proc on the big one, one proc on the small one. Beautiful AoE. Niels finish. Ah, perfect golems. This is what I like watching. All right, so Mithy and Niels. Please and Crepo. We'll see if they are going to keep that up as the game progresses. So, Freeze and Unlimited meet them down in the bot side. Both supports have taken a little bit of damage, but they're nibbling away at the Biscuits to get themselves up to a level. Meanwhile, Soaz is going to go ahead and take the teleport route up to the top as he uh, started a camp of his own to begin this game, try to get that little bit of experience advantage on Young Buck, who's already wailing away at the minions. Out of the bot, though, really quick Ignite used on Unlimited. Ignite. They really want this level two all in. Nice flash from Niels away. However, the heal's going to come in. Niels a little bit low, Ooh. but Freeze is isolated from his support. And Mithy is just being a big bully. Amazing's and amazing, here. he's got his big belly to deal with Unlimited. Dark Binding, but he's still in range. First blood and 400 Gs. Over to Amazing. I love this iteration from the Origin lineup. They know they will get the level two power spike. They know they can go aggressive. Love that flash from Niels as well, aggressively dodging the binding. And then Amazing, going for a little bit of a cheesy play here. Gets two camps, or one camp, immediately goes down to the bot lane. Joins that fight, knows there's going to be action. Even if the, if the 
opponent survived that, you can dive them right off because you've burned all their summons in the fight. Picks up first blood, freeze us to base, lose all that CS, and he's down 13 CS in the bot lane already. And that was so confident from Mithy. He steps up, he immediately ignited. They knew that they were the stronger duo. And that is supreme confidence in that bot lane to do that. Yeah, Neil's fantastic player. Really good at level two all-ins in addition to his just normal laning style because you saw him flash aggressively and that marks the great player that really understands that level two power spike that we often joke around. But you can flash this binding because you know it's going to come. And if you flash over it, you can translate that into aggression. Anwax? He's on a stealth mission, but I don't think he can deal with Amazing right now. Double buff first to the red. He wants to take the Gromp away now. Maybe he realizes his time is now. The hate spikes were flying out, but Amazing flashed it. Yeah, he waited for Amazing to use his abilities on the Gromp, then smite it away and forced the flash. Good move by Arax. Good reactionary move here, but overall Origin prime position right now. So as he knew where Evelyn was, and that's all that matters. Yeah, Origin are doing a lot of things right here, but Airwax was able to get a little bit back here. Let's see if he can grab Peke. The Sanguine Pool comes out. He's in safety range. We've seen this before. Yeah. I mean, this, this is one of the reasons Peke is liking that, Vlad. It's, it's so hard to hit him. And with health as a resource, too, you never can be truly sure exactly how close you are to killing Vladimir. Uh, he's always able to escape Ghost and Flash in him as well. Very nimble. Kind of be hard to kill him. So as pulling down Young Buck here a little bit. Speaking of a guy who's hard to kill, so as. Doing nice and fine, chugging away at the flask. Young Buck forced under tower. Airwax now back into the blue as Soren is poking away out at the barrel. Oh, it's a little so bit late, but cheeky, cheeky maneuver by Amazing. Has had a game fit for his name so far. Amazing, a little bit behind in experience. Cut his Grom stolen, went for the blue steel, didn't really work out. Airwax, a lot of action, already a couple camps ahead. Had to donate his blue buff and is still in an experience lead on Amazing, so he's. He's staying quite stable in his game. Very true. Origin now. They still hold that slim lead, most of it due to the first blood, but there's also a pretty massive CS differential in that bottom lane, mostly because Freeze spent a lot of his, uh, what could have been farming time, trying to run away from Niels and Mithy. So that's pretty much not a greatest start for that Ash. Now Mithy straight up maxing his hook because at level three, the hook will guaranteed pop the black shield from Organa. Then you can still proc the hook, follow in Lantern Killista on your way, play people back and do a whole heap of damage that way. Sometimes at level three, so rank two hook can already do that. Depends on how much AP uh, the Morgana runs and just how much magic pen you have on the Thresh. But that's a little quirky interaction in this Morgana matchup that you definitely have to be aware of. So level five, you might see a hook from uh, Miffy come in if she doesn't have flash still. Some punish. Yep. Meanwhile, to the top side, Airwax is uh, taking away his Krugs, but he was spotted there. Nice vision placed down. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so what you do. Stop that's it. what you do against Evelyn. You just water camps instead of trying to ward the standard spots. You have to adapt and good adaptation from Soas there. I imagine it was him that placed that ward. Yep. Now uh, missing pings flying. Ex Peke is Look, not where Mithy's they is doing to be. the exact same thing. Yep. Grump Ward. Nicely done. A little bit of roam by Mithy to secure that one up. Uh, Niels just fine on his own down here. There's really no pressure from Freeze. This Ash is having a real hard time just staying relevant in farm and hasn't really been able to base for items either. You also take a look at the CS differential in the mid. Peke is, has been giving Soren a hard time. Generally speaking, he's got his uh, he's got his revolver already finished, and now you know we'll see how that one does continue to go. However, Freeze managed to catch up a little bit. Neil's up for the Vamp Scepter, gets some sustain. He can now no longer get poked out. So he's always on full HP, which facilitates those all-ins we talked about earlier. They're letting the lane push back. Safety under your tower until you hit level six, and then you can go for the aggressive flash. Because you always have a secondary flash when you're playing with a Kalista. You can use your flash aggressively and then get pulled out with Fate's Call. Opens up for a lot of, a lot of outplay potential. A lot of outplay potential, that is what it is. Now, Soaz, he's got his boots on, looking ready to go a walking on Youngbok. Peke in the mid, continues to keep that wave push. Let's go to the bottom where the hook goes flying, splitting the uprights, but Freeze, look at that damage that's on him straight through the black shield. It doesn't stop AD. Airwax now, though, looking to try and answer in the top side. Ignite was on him, and Soaz says, let's take this fight. Forces the flash, runs right into him, and that's a dead Evelyn as Soaz is galloping away from Youngbuck. He might be able to make his escape, and a one for none in a 2v1. Soas with the aggression, you're ganking my lane. Don't you know who I am? I am the crazy French top laner. Burns the ignite, kills Airwax, and at the same time, oh, Origin secured that dragon after that aggression. 
in the bot lane. We saw it. That's why they wanted that lane to bounce back to them, because then they have the distance to hop forward constantly on freeze, use those gap closers aggressively. Kalista was nerfed passively, but aggression leads to poking people out. So has Distracted Jungle and Origin. They, they pick up the dragon. Yeah, they pick up the dragon on top of it. You know, I don't even know if it counts as a nerf on Kalista if you never hop backwards, Crepo. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, Working around those game mechanics, yeah. just keep hopping forward. Yeah, you're just totally don't, fine. Don't so feel it. There's nothing changed. Working towards that hurricane pickup for him. We'll see how this one goes. Or Blade of the Rune King, a new change. Whatever you want at this point. Yeah, he's got so many options. That's yeah. the cool thing about about what Niels is doing right now, and he's he's gotten his lead back up to almost 20 CS. Hawkshot goes flying, just to try and see. Uh, where Amazing might be, it's going to go ahead and send its way over the red. But Amazing is there to pick that one up. Not really anything Copenhagen Wolves can do on this map at the moment, though. So there's two styles you can do it with Kalista. You can go for straight 80 damage and, and max the Q, get a little bit more poke. That's why generally when you want to push people on the tower and make it easier for you to land that Q repetitively. Niels, no, he likes that wave close to his tower, maxes his E, and then you can follow freeze down the lane if you ever get close to him, flash play from Miffy, hook from Miffy, offensive uh, type of play, and then eventually stack out those rent stacks and pop it to put freeze down to maybe 10% or even 0%. Exactly what he wants to do. Trying to play safe here. That's one thing Origins bot lane always does is they respect the enemy jungler. Rarely will you see them go for an all-in and get punished by a counter gank. I have yet to see that happen in the LCS and still they manage to win their lane every time. Beautiful aggro passive play. Yeah, it makes you really wonder that what team is, is going to be able to challenge this Origin squad. Don't want to look too far ahead. There's teleport. Future. Copenhagen Wolves are going to try to make that happen here. Ash Arrow comes out, but Young Buck on the teleport locks up Niels. Airwax is going to try to get at least something, but the are face you serious? No one dies on Origin. Not today. And look at the coach, the duck, smiling and says, yes, that's why I picked Kalista Trash for my bot lane, because they get out of four-man gang squad, force the flash from Airwax, Force the young buck teleport and somehow get out unscathed. Losing your support would be fine there, but Fate's Call, secondary flash. Beautiful iteration there, and so as. First there were two people in his lane, now there's zero. He's happy with that. Yeah, he had some help from Amazing too, was able to proxy behind the wave, and while young buck was away, the horse will play all over that tower. Just about polishes it off, lets the minions take a few more shots, and young buck, there's not much he can really do here. With him, with Soa sitting in lane. And this is a catch 22. Usually, when you play against a Thresh lane, you don't focus the AD carry because he will get lantern out. So, what do you do? You focus the Thresh. But in a Kalista lane, what you usually do is you focus Kalista, but not the Thresh because the Thresh will get pulled back. So, who the hell do you focus? My head hurts, Crapo. Exactly. Catch 22. I think, I, think the, I think the Wolves are. The answer is no one. Well. You go to mid lane, but who's there? Peke with Sanguine Pool. So, yeah, okay, logically, you go to the top lane. And, and then Soas kills you. <laughs> so, okay, so what they had to do is they had to find Amazing so in his jungle. <laughs> uh, Airwax almost did. Yeah, Let's that's give true. Give him some credit there. That's true. But as it stands, they just haven't been able to find anything beyond that, a little bit of harassment. So as it stands, you know, we're, we're approaching 12 minutes on the clock. There's been a dragon in favor of Origin. There's been a gold lead for them with the tower as well. And now they're stacking up on this bottom side while Copenhagen Wolves bot lane is away. So as out of range. Amazing coming up on this one. Soas has teleport advantage. We saw aggression on the bot lane. We saw flashes used. This usually prompts a return gank from the Copenhagen Wolves jungler, but Origin already predicting this. They're ready. Four man bot lane. They want to storm the front. They want to dive this tower potentially. But he's going to flate. Oh, play's not going to connect. However, the hook oh, will, and Unlimited is the one who's caught up. Thanks to Mithy. In comes Amazing. The arrow is out, but the barrel is out as well. And a second one, Amazing, will polish him off the second time around. Forces the Black Shield, knows there's going to be reactionary bind and dodges forward, lands the hook on the support. What a play. Beautiful execution there by Origin. And they I feel like they're one or even two steps ahead of their opponent consistently so far in the LCS. And yeah, fantastic play. Yeah, they, just, they just haven't been challenged. They have been one or two, or sometimes three steps ahead. And amazing. He knew Airwax was there all along. Mythy coming up, but. Evelyn is long gone right now. However, the tower looks like it's going down pretty soon. And so many subtle outplays here. Miffy trying to fish for the invincible Evelyn. He knows roughly where she is, but yeah, isn't quite sure. Do but that. I just want to reiterate what Amazing did there. 
Many Gragasus would have just thrown their ultimate, but he knew about the risk of the exhaust, so he opened with a Q barrel, then reevaluated the situation. Morgan had a flash so he had time. Erox, he spotted though. Yep, and amazing returns fire onto a Mithy in the front. In comes Soren. Fate's call, Niels will bail Mithy out, and still Origin stays safe everywhere on the map. And again, this is why I love playing with a Kalista, because you can overextend your normal range, peel aggressively, and then get pulled out by Fate's Call the second you're about to get hit. And the synergy on this bot lane from Origin is, is very, very impressive. You can see the level of trust they have and how they're able to execute together. All across the board, Origin doing fantastic. 3,000 gold in the lead. Dragon is coming up in another half minute. Copenhagen Wolves have to find a way to punish Origin, but they're not being given an opening. Now, the Wolves are usually a double threat type of team with Soren and Freeze doing most of the carry potential. Soren still even in the mid lane, 130 CS, so there's still a little bit of hope left for the Wolves right here. If he can get a Sharima shuffle off, as they call it, the Miffy is looking to go aggressive yet again because the support from Amazing is here. A uh, freeze has got not much mana. They're gonna pull him back in after burning through the Black Shield. Amazing picks up a spree kill. That tower is not lasting long, and a teleport comes in as Unlimited has found the binding. So as galloping around the side, runs right into Unlimited, Flipping and company. down he goes. You reap what you sow in League of Legends, and that is another kill for Soaz. We asked for Blood Pyra, and Blood is what we got. 5-0 Origin right here, translating that kill. Why did Soaz teleport? Because not only does he get a kill, he sets up for the Dragon right here. He can go to base or just simply run back to the top lane, because Youngbuck is still struggling with pushing that way backwards, and the Wolves are consistently two steps behind. It might be close to three steps at this point. Soren has let a big wave fly in the mid, but there really isn't much else Copenhagen Wolves can do. Looking to stack up on the top side, while Soaz does not have that teleport available, maybe polish off a tower. It got to stem the bleeding, though, because they are in danger of uh, pretty much having it all bled out. Yeah, they were en route to get perfect gain by Origin, but at least they're picking up one tower to stop that from happening. Don't want to be that team that gives that up. Tower goes to the Wolves. Discrepancy, 4,000 gold, 5-0 on the scoreboard. Two dragons to none. Uh-oh. So us? He's in a bit of trouble. I don't think he expected three members of the Wolves to be there. However, he's able to make it out at the cost of simply an onslaught of shadows. Yeah. Blood frenzy occasionally leads to some amnesia. Yeah, just, or maybe a little bit of face checking. A little bit of face checking. Forgot that there were three members that just took that tower. No. I guess it's kind of ironic. We've talked about blood all game, and, and Vladimir's really not been involved in much of it. It's I, like think, I think Peke wants to. Though. It's like Peke said in his interview yesterday, I believe. Yo, Peke, what happened? They asked him. I don't know. I was farming in the mid lane, and then, then we won. I like I those, those kind of games. games. <laughs> oh, you too. Soaz is uh, in some trouble here a little bit. However, oh, he oh. burns down. Airwax will That's finally get him. Niels, though, is on the revenge with the help of Mithy. Airwax is going to pay dearly. Another kill or a kill over to the AD carry. Good guy, Miffy, not taining that support score. He's well on his way way to become the, the bond of the Rift right here. Two more assists for that one. I can try to keep the tower alive. Neal Ulti for wave clear. Yep, he should be able to uh, scare them off, and he does. Niels and Miffy were there as well. So Copenhagen Wolves, despite that one tower, they've yet to get anything else. Freeze looking for a wave down bottom to help him accomplish it, but he can't get too close. It's very dangerous to go alone. Now he'll just let the wave crash against the tower. Peke, back in the mid. Trying to deal with Soren, Youngbuck, and Unlimited. However, he's got some help from Mithy. He's got Amazing around the side. He's OK. You see Freeze base. And one reason Vladimir is actually pretty cool to play into Ash, because often you'll see Ash players base and send an arrow down the mid lane from the fountain. However, Sanguine Pool on a player like Peke can be used to just straight up dodge that. So that angle is kind of ruined. A very nimble top laner on Hecarim as well. Very hard to land that arrow, so he's having issues to get these snipes because just like Forgiven did uh, earlier when he played Ash 2, or yesterday rather. And we see the weaknesses. Week 1 we saw the rise of Ash. You know, is she the new OP pick in the AD carry position? Not quite. It all depends on whose hands she falls into, but yes, it hasn't worked quite so well for Freeze this game. However, it's certainly not the only problem the Wolves are having. Origin across the board, approaching the 18-minute mark. 6-2-1 is the kill score. Over 4,000 gold ahead. Two towers to one will help that, as will two dragons. 
And now they're stacking up top to try to push their lead. Yeah, Miffy scouting across that wall, denying Ooh, a possible Elvin flank. Yeah, we see the teleport come in, so the Wolves want to go for a double flank collapse. In comes the arrow, but it's oh. between Miffy and Neils, and that is backfired on the Wolves, who are unsure if they want to take this fight. Maokai still running to try and get to the team. Origin don't know he's here just yet, but the barrel will come out onto Airwax, and it so comes so as that burst damage. Amazing, picks up another. Flash from Unlimited as him and Freeze bail out. Young Buck all by himself, locked up by Niels, looking like he might have regretted this teleport. Tosses the sapling, but it's him who's getting touched down or not. Stays alive, so as still hanging on with a sliver of health, as Amazing now has to get away from the Sand Soldier range. Close calls for Origin, but they haven't dropped yet. Good awareness by Origin overall in that fight. Peke wasn't even in that. That was a 4v5. The second they spotted Youngberg, Amazing immediately turned around, started peeling, and somehow no member of Origin dropped there, although it was very, very close in Sawaz's case. Very, very close. Uh, also close for Young Buck, as it were. Now things reset to a, a bit of normalcy. Yeah. As Freeze clears away some wards, and they take stock of the situation. Resets to normalcy, Origin 5,000 gold ahead, 20 minute mark, almost an expectation so far in the European LCS They're summer the bar here, Crapo. Definitely Dra setting the bar. Dragon's a minute and a half away, but right now Copenhagen Wolves have some other ideas. Let's see if they can pick off Soaz. No ultimate. He's got his teleport though, if he can get out of range of being stunned up, and he's trying for it. Runs on Unlimited, he might take this fight. Soaz is getting seriously crazy this game, and he makes him think twice about that. Amazing now, not about to let this opportunity expire. Airwax running as fast as he can. The binding's gonna hit him up, but Airwax now in some trouble as he's slowed down by the barrel. So as will pick him off, and the rest of Origin clear the back line away as Unlimited goes down to Niels. Youngbuck bailing out his freeze and storm will take a tower in mid, but will be met by Peke. Fantastic hack herb so far by Soa. So deceptive. It looked like he was running in the minions just to have the minions block the dark banning, but then suddenly turns around and does so much damage on Unlimited. Nobody was ready for that. Still has his ignite. Ulti came up. Teleport is now being used. So as he's got himself the home guards, and in he goes. Freeze. His health bar's gone. The arrow's not going to connect. And so as claims another. Looking now for Soren as he dashes away to the safety of his tower, forced to use the ultimate to get away. Meanwhile, tower drops in mid. One teleport used and ultimate forces two defensive ultimates on the Copenhagen Wolves. 1v2 still gets a kill. So as you've practiced this champion before. I think that's a safe bet. Origin seemed to be in complete control of this game as Young Buck gets caught in a hook. Tries to go in on Amazing, getting chunked down, and Peke will claim his first kill of the game. Might as well get him involved in a little bit of it while they're having fun, Grappo. Yeah. <laughs> Under 10% kill participation from Peke. Origin members like to keep their job. Peke said, okay guys, now it's my turn to get a kill or else you're off the team. <laughs> it's not good for my fantasy. So, well, let's see. <laughs> and Bruce, but for Origin, little to complain about. They will secure themselves. Dragon number three, Copenhagen Wolves. It's spiraling out of their reach. Yeah, we go back to the feature that we saw or the clip that Amazing said. We're not a mid lane focused team. Copenhagen Wolves trying a, a bit of that mid lane focus themselves, but doesn't quite work out. And Peke yeah, farming up a storm, but his team is winning the game for him. And should they falter, should they fall behind, then he will come in. He's a uh, desperate times, desperate measures type of guy, but no desperate times so far for Origin. Well, it says something when you don't have to get your mid lane involved and you're already doing this quite quite this well in this game. They've extended the gold lead up. It's over 7,000 at this point. We've hit 22 minutes on the clock. Copenhagen Wolves haven't been able to contest a single dragon. Origin just own this map wherever they damn please they can go. And Niels has found Young Buck and scoots him away from his pink ward, only taking a sapling toss in exchange. Looking at the split so far, it seems that Origin is always involved in, in some of the most one-sided games so far. Always very stompy almost to the mm -hmm. point, outclassing their opponents both individually as well as macro level play. And we saw Giants go head to head a little bit with Origin, give them a run for the money. And initially we wrote it off as Origin coming in weak and Giants performing decently. But going back to that game, it seems that you have to give credit where credit is due. Yeah, and really, really got a... Got, they made the game closer than the Wolves are doing right now. More than anyone else has. I mean, and that's something I don't think anybody would have expected going into this split. The Wolves now, they're feeling the burn from this Origin team as well. And it's been so very hard to critique this squad on anything. Really, 
maybe just not ending as fast as they possibly could. Well, they like having fun. They do like having fun. And you know, you might as well. If you're in the LCS, you've made it this far, you still keep getting the wins. Let the good times roll and let the barrels keep on going. Airwax now in enemy territory and they all immediately jump on him, sending everything his way as they peel away from the Baron. The kills are more important and Soaz looks to secure another. He is going to just barely have to speed his way up to finally polish him off. Five, one, and three. This horse is going and crazy. And Miffy with a very optimistic shot at an LCS big play there, shooting his hook all the way to the left. The only way that would have hit is if Arox flashed over the wall and walked into it. Hey, securing all angles, because he knew if Arox doesn't flash in that exact position and he doesn't get that fancy hook, then eventually Soas will just run him down. Another kill on the board. Origin can push top tower, they can push mid tower, they can go for Baron. Their potential is limitless at this point is indeed. Niels and Soaz will make quick work of that tower on the top. Origin look to be setting up for a Baron as Copenhagen Wolves all but Youngbuck have been combined, confined into their base. Youngbuck will finally get a tower there, but small peanuts at this point. Origin starting this Baron off and there is no response. Hawkshot's gonna go through and find it out, but will they react? Yeah, and even the potential steal is out of the equation. No more flash from Evelyn, and even if she gets close enough, we're, we're talking about Ren dealing over 1,500 damage at these points in the game, combined out with Smite. There's no way that opening wolves are gonna steal this. Galista secures it. Yeah, Aerox was trying to make something happen, but so has chased him off, was able to twirl around and do some extra damage. Peke now. Separated a little from his team as he tries to cut Young Buck, Airwax, and Unlimited off. Gets the Baron Empowerment on those minions. And we'll see how this game keeps on going. 25 minutes in. Yeah, Origin with the shortest average game length in the LCS so far. And look, to have that stat even more. Let's see if they can close in time. Or if Soas returns to his liking of ending up in the enemy fountain at the end of the game. Yes, rooting today. those poor, poor people that selected him in the fantasy. The funny thing is it didn't change his KDA because that was his first death. Uh, oh. There you go. Yeah, I suppose I guess it didn't That is all right. Much. He's got one death on the board here too, but I, I think Copenhagen Wolves are going to be hard pressed to really pick off anyone here. They've got the one kill this game. Airwax still deep in enemy territory trying to find a pick up. Peke is the one freeze. who's found. Freezes health bar. Oh, the blood is sucked out of him as he dances to his death. Peke will pick him off. And now Origin find Copenhagen Wolves with their pants down and start to pick out the next, or the inhibitor turrets, I should say. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves freeze, press D for dance, and made amazing press F for flash, even though he was running it on D. What did that kill steal? He wanted the credit. He wanted to make his fans proud that selected him in the fancy LCS. Those juicy points. Now he's without a flash. At least has body slam. To get across mm -hmm. that wall. So as he's stuck. At this point, he might even use his ultimate to get I, over. I don't think it's really a problem for him at this point. They can't do much to him. No one can stable that horse. And another inhibitor turret goes down without much of a fight. For Copenhagen Wolves, we got 26 minutes on the clock. Niels, fancy footwork to dodge away from the Ash Arrow. Peke, Mithy, amazing. Niels, they're all up on this inhibitor and down it goes. They've got more super minions on the way, looking to clean sweep it around or maybe just fire down the Nexus turrets. They've got minions on all sides. Peke dodging away from the Dark Vine. In comes Soren. Trying to get that Shurima shuffle off, but it won't work. Mithy getting pulled back by the face call, and Soas goes in head first into the tower. He might get picked off, shut down by Young Buck, but Origin, they don't seem too phased by this. Young Buck caught in the line, and Peke moving forward, deciding, I think it's not worth it just yet. Let's go back, friend. And there we see the change on Vladimir made. You can now activate items in Sanguine Pool or click Lanterns right there. Peke getting out safely. Another interaction that we didn't really mention on before. Sanguine Pool got changed, you can press Zonius, you can take Lanterns, and even more nimble Expeke, the only one. Again, okay. dying here is so us. 100% death participation. 100%. He's yeah. the number one feeder this game. Eight seconds till the next Dragon, but that doesn't seem to be a priority for Origin right now. They have got bigger fish to fry. Tower going down in the bottom. Copenhagen Wolves base is already in shambles, and the last standing inhibitor and inhibitor turret are looking to go down here. Peke leading the charge with the Hemoplague Plague onto Young Buck and Unlimited. Amazing has found Airwax. Here's and so has with a teleport around the backside. Niels will pick up a kill there. And Copenhagen Wolves, they've got nothing left in this tank. Origin have rolled over them just like they have just about everybody else this split so far. Minions are flying all around the board. This 
first game is almost over. And every game from Origin I see makes me so excited for week four at Origin will clash with Fnatic. I can't wait to see that matchup. Amazing almost going down here. Soren barely gets him. There's Make the Zir there turret again. on the Nexus turret right now, Crepo. Origin are styling. Unlimited will fall down. There's still some wolves left to howl, but Origin don't need to be worried about that at all. Nexus is going down 28 and a half, and Origin are 4 and 0. Uno Mas said the wolves, they killed Miffy in the end. Sharing that pain between each other. Don't want Soas to be the only one going down with deaths on this game. Fantastic performance by Origin yet again. Big smiles all around for this Origin squad. And what more could you ask for? Blazing a trail into the LCS, the squad that Peke has put together. And now they have yet to lose a game through week two. They varied their jungle path. They had the level two power spike. They have good macro level play. And then they have Soas with the crazy Ignite Hecarim turning everything upside down. And meanwhile, should they ever need it, they have a world-class mid laner in there, in mid, in mid lane rather, as Xpeke. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. In the back pocket. When you have Xpeke in your back pocket, things are going quite well for them. Oh yes, Origin have to be happy with their performance so far. Begs the question, what can stop these guys? We'll have to find out, I mean, that week four matchup with Fnatic starting to look pretty exciting. The only two teams that have yet to drop a game on the board. Over on the Wolves side though, a lot to work on, a lot to think about. Really didn't have much of an opportunity to get involved this game in anything. No, draft was all right for the Wolves. Composition with a clear goal, clear weaknesses too. And those weaknesses were exploited. No Wayne Swap came in place. Not sure if there was double mind games there or, or, or if the Ash Morgana felt comfortable going up against Calista Thresh, but I feel with the for the level 2 power spike, beautifully snowballed, aggressive flash from Niels. Comes just out enough. They made it look easy, but they really mastered that combo. And let's go back to that four man gank that they somehow managed to survive. It showed just absolute mastery of that Kalista Thresh combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those bot laners slipped through the fingers of the wolves. And I, I can't believe they were able to then immediately move on to the top side. They, they went ahead and did their four man dive down bot. It, Origin. You know, they're playing this game so far ahead of, it seems like, just about every other team in the LCS right now. It's, it's so hard to see uh, how these other teams are going to react to them. I don't think anyone's able to figure them out so far. Yeah, they have beautiful planning, saying one or two steps ahead. And then their in-fight shot calling seems to be very calm as well, calculated, meticulous. Young Bucks tries to flank, amazing, immediately turns his eyes to the back of the fight, starts peeling, and everybody plays around Niels and keeps him alive. And when Niels actually gets close to dying, that's when his APM, his mechanics come back in, hop left, hop right, flash over a binding, fantastic plays all around. Yeah, really not much more to say about that one. So with it, we're going to go ahead and shoot it over Riftside to Quickshot. He's joined by Origins, Mithy.